everyone who is here and everyone who will join and everyone who has joined. This is season two of Virtual Booth and Lunch and it is episode 26. I'm going to mute everyone for right now, but in this newest version of Zoom, you can unmute yourself if you feel like you need to come up with a, you know, scream, shout of joy <laughs> or protest, I suppose. We haven't had any of that yet in 26 episodes, so I hope not to have that today. But you are obviously here because you are all about being social and virtual social with us today. And we are very glad for that because we have some pretty incredible guests and we are starting something a little bit new. So I'm gonna ask everyone to lean into their computer if you can, unless you're one of the guests, because I know some of you are far from your computers, and make sure that that chat box is open, because the way that brunch is really wonderful and deeply connecting and does good things for not just you, but for all of our guests, is when you get involved in the chats. So I'm going to ask everyone to take a moment right now and enter some good news from this week. Anything great that's happened or good that's happened or something that you feel successful about, we would really love for everyone to share that in the chats so that we can make this as close to a real life brunch where you're chatting with friends and drinking and eating as possible because we always want to celebrate all the good things with you and this is I learned this term when we first started doing the brunch an evergreen show so we're all about positive things and great things that are happening in your lives and also the positive and great things that we can learn together I also want to share that this week we have Megan Olson back as co-host, which is super exciting because I love her so much and she's such a treasured and valued brunch regular and such a smart cookie. And if you needed recipes or anything like that for today or wanted to revisit any of them, you can find them on my webpage, BelindaChang.com and just hit that virtual boozy brunch tab. And we love all of you for always tagging your pictures of your finished drinks and your finished dishes with hashtag virtual boozy brunch they live on forever on my instagram so please continue to do that we just really really love that i think that's all i have to share i'm ready to turn it over to my co-host morgan if she's ready let's do this i'm ready thanks for having me back belinda it's so great to be here and see so many familiar faces um, my regular brunchers know this song and dance, but Belinda and I did get a little peek at Oprah's requirements for her Zoom events. And she's got like 20 things that she requires from all her guests, everything from what you can wear to how you have to act on camera. And obviously we're a bit more low key here at Virtual Boozy Brunch, but we do have three asks of all of our audience members to just make this as fun and amazing and worthy of your time as humanly possible. So Belinda already mentioned the first bit, and I see some great stuff coming in on the chat from anniversaries to cases of wine sold. So that's amazing. Congratulations. Please, if you haven't already, just pop your good news in the chat. We also use that chat function throughout brunch today to bring up comments and questions for our experts who are lending us their time today. So if you think, you know, a drink looks really good or you've got a question about something, pop it in the chat and we will probably spotlight you so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one experience with our expert to ask your question, which leads me to my next point, which is for Zoom newbies, we've got two ways to watch. So up in the corner of your screen, you can either watch in speaker view, which will have me highlighted right now, but you can also watch in my preferred method, which is gallery view. Um, and that is where you can see all of the beautiful faces in virtual boozy brunch, mixing and mashing and making throughout the, the afternoon. Um, and quick reminder that we can see you if you've got your video on. Um, and we ask that you give our speakers and experts your undivided attention today. So make eye contact, you know, don't be texting. We've got this hour every week to just really build this sense of community. And we all know what it's like to get up and be in front of a room full of people. It's nice when people are making eye contact with you and paying attention. And finally, probably most importantly, thank you for joining us again this week. We are so thrilled to have you. We realize that it is incredibly tempting to get out and resume life as normal, but we all know life's not normal right now. So thank you for being safe with us here at Virtual Boozy Brunch again this week. 
Thanks, Morgan. So just to give another round of thanks to last week's guests, we made epic tarts with Ready to Roll Dough's founder, Stephanie Locke. Garrett Richard was here and we all got our swizzle on and made maybe some of the best cocktails we've made at home. A lot of people noted that his recipes were so great. And then we also had Amy Boyle from 52, I always get this wrong, phenomenal, not extraordinary, though they are extraordinary women, and learned about her photo project when she also had some Oprah ties. She was the one who sent me the Oprah Zoom regulations. So thank you to all of them for being here with us for the TART episode, but I'm going to let Morgan speak about this week's episode, which is titled Social. Yes, I am so excited for this week's theme because this is really the core of Virtual Boozy Brunch, right? Is to reclaim that social aspect of your lives. And I think probably everybody here today can agree with me when I say that I used to have a jam-packed social calendar of events and dinners and drinks and all kinds of stuff that, that made up my week. And when we first went into lockdown, I was totally lost. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, and things like virtual boozy brunch gave me kind of that sense of socialization again and made me feel part of a community. I also realized that there's probably like a lot of things that I was kind of like carrying on as like baggage in my life. So hitting reset on that, reconnecting with people and redefining what it means to be social is what it is all about here. So this could not be a more perfect theme for today. And we have some amazing guests to help us socialize today. And Belinda's gonna go ahead and introduce them. We have a jam-packed show. Thanks, Morgan. So we're gonna be making a perfect, you know, level up your gin and tonic. I've got a frozen bottle of gin here and I'm ready to do that with Tom Macy. And we also have Julie Rayner, his partner in Social Hour. So that theme has a lot in common with these amazing canned cocktails that were just released and we're gonna some of us are gonna be able to try them and the rest of you will have to just have a little FOMO and figure out how to get them into your bar and into your home. We're also gonna make us pacho today. So I've chopped up a lot of vegetables with a really special recipe from the owner and founder of Luli Winery in the Santa Rita Hills. And then lastly, wow, this is the first time I've always wanted to incorporate movement here because we do a lot of drinking and we do a lot of eating together, but we don't do any exercise or movement generally. So we have two epic performers and dancers who have choreographed a TikTok dance for us to learn and do together. So if you don't have pants on, you have like 20 minutes to get them on so that you can dance with us. I can't wait for that, especially. I can't wait for all of it. So without any further ado, I'm going to send it to Morgan to introduce our first just oh, amazing guest and get some drinks into our hands. I am so excited for these guests that we have up first. When Belinda told me, I was like, this is bar royalty. So we are hanging out next with Tom Macy, and Julie Reiner, who are partners in a new venture called Social Hour, these amazing canned cocktails that we're gonna talk about in just a few minutes. Um, but first, we're gonna talk to Tom Macy, who is an epic bartender in New York and has actually perfected the gin and tonic. Um, and he's shared this research and technique that he's done with everyone from GQ to HuffPost, many others. But today we get him one-on-one -on -one to really share the magic with us. Um, so Tom, you wanna get a drink in our glasses and tell us how to build this perfect gin and tonic? For sure, let's do it. Um, yeah, so the it feeds perfectly into the canned cocktail discussion because the initial spark of the idea for uh, social hour and great canned cocktails or bot pre-made bottled cocktails was me making gin and tonics for my wife and I at home and just micromanaging every element to get it absolutely perfect. And I thought, God, this is a lot of work. Wouldn't it be great if you could just have it perfect in a can ready to go? And that was seven years ago. And so it's been a long road. But um, there is a way to get a uh, perfect gin and tonic. Um, it just requires a little bit of prep and maximization of all the ingredients because it is a very simple drink. Uh, but uh, as we all know, uh, bad gin and tonics happen and it's a huge drag. Uh, so the first thing that's really important is you want to get all your ingredients really cold. Um, gin, because it's a spirit, won't freeze, so it can live in the freezer. Um, and uh, you normally wouldn't do this with a cocktail that you're mixing, because when you shake with ice, you're going to dilute it, and which is important. But here, the tonic's all the dilution we need. So frozen gin, two ounces. 
into your glass. Your, is your go-to gin Tangare? Um, that's like sort of the house, the house gin. Um, yeah, I really like the heavy pine juniper note that it's a juniper bomb. Uh, but I think, you know, all kinds of gins are, it's really, really fun to play around with, obviously, but I really like a classic London dry. Um, so two ounces of gin. And also, again, if you really want to geek out about all of it, um, a nice size glass is pretty important. Uh, something like 12 to 14 ounces. So we've got the gin first into our frozen glass. I didn't mention that. It's a good idea to keep get your glass cold. And then the ice. Uh, we're gonna do, I don't know, four or five, five or six big pieces of ice. And then this actually is something, a little bit of an update. My wife and I discovered this in quarantine. We kind of edited the recipe because you know we were uh, drinking a lot like everybody else. Um, is that so we were always lime people uh, in our gin and tonics, uh, which we do do, but we actually uh, now we put on our ice and the gin, squeeze in a lime wedge, and then discard it. So the juice is in there, but the lime doesn't stay in there. Um, I'll get back to that why later. Uh, so then our tonic water, you want to, you know, use a really uh, ideally a small bottle of tonic water that hasn't been opened because that's where you're gonna get maximum carbonation. Obviously you want to get that cold as well. That's a huge problem with gin and tonics, right? Is that if you have a big bottle of tonic and you've already used it the night before or something, it's gonna be flat and uh, it's a flat gin and tonic is a huge drag. Uh, so I, I've made plenty of gin and tonics in this glass. So I know about what six ounces looks like. But if you've never done it before, it doesn't hurt to measure the tonic at least once so you know what your proper ratio is going to be. That's a huge, uh, th maybe the biggest uh, part of making a great gin and tonic is getting the ratios correct. Sometimes, depending on how big your glass is, you just fill it all the way up with tonic water and you don't realize that you are way over diluting your gin or it's a small glass and then like it's way too strong. So two ounces of gin, you got about six ounces of tonic. Finally, we're going to go with a lemon wedge, which was like a huge thing <laughs> when we did it. Uh, I guess it was in March. Um, we were doing, lime, we like lime, we like lemon. And so what we realized was that lime is a little bit, just has a touch of astringency because we would always do two wedges. Um, that if we, so that's why we discard the lime wedge so the peel doesn't kind of give more astringency into the drink. And lemon is just a little bit softer. Um, so uh, that sort of light citrus, floral citrusy note in the lemon goes right in on top and you can drop that right in. And I kind of do this thing where I, I kind of swirl it around like that. You don't, or maybe push the ice up and down just so that it incorporates things, but doesn't kill too much carbonation. And that's it. That is the perfect gin and tonic. And uh, it's, it's early, but let's do it. Yes, Cheers, everyone. up. And for anyone who's watching along and just learned how to make the most epic gin and tonic, like all of us just did, mm. please send a Venmo over to Tom. His Venmo is super simple. It's just social hour. So tip your bartender today. That's what Virtual Boozy Brunch is all about. Um, and next, so you can actually get, if you're, if you're too lazy to make it, <laughs> like me. Do all that. You can right. buy it in a can. So let's talk about, let's get Julie on here to maybe talk about social hour with us and where this all came from, why these canned cocktails are better than anything else on the market. Julie, do you want to talk to us about this? You have to unmute you. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. am I, I am unmuted now. Um, yeah, so Tom, you know, this is Tom and I have worked together for a very long time uh, at Clover Club and, you know, Early on, we started talking about this canned cocktail idea because he was always so obsessive about making drinks perfect. You know, our menus at the bars, we'll do like 40 versions of something. So social hour basically was we tasted a bunch of canned cocktails and we felt like they we could do it better. You know, most of them are the ratios are not correct, which he just demonstrated. It should be two ounces of gin, six ounces of tonic. Uh, a lot of these gin and tonics that are on the market right now are in a 12 ounce can. So the ratios are really off. Um, and yeah, that was the idea. We wanted to, to put bar quality cocktails into a can uh, and, and give people the, the quality level that we strive for behind the bar. And uh, the idea was that you know, we really didn't want to have 
anything with our name on it that wasn't as good, if not better than what we could make behind our bar. So yeah, we have a whiskey mule, which has got nice spicy ginger beer and rye whiskey. Uh, the Pacific Spritz, which is sort of like a, um, it's like a rosé spritz style of cocktail. A little grapefruit twist on that or right out of the can. It's delicious.